In this tutorial, we're going to look at a formative assessment game called Quiznetic. And probably the best way to think about Quiznetic is think of it as being a board game that can be played online in real time and using multiple devices. And so similar to Kahoot, Socrative, Quizzes, and other similar tools, you can project on, let's say, a screen at the front of the room, a game board that the students see, and then they enter on their devices, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, a Chromebook, or a laptop, or maybe you go to the computer lab to use those computers. But the students enter their answers, and the results of their answers are displayed on the screen in the form of a game. If you're interested in getting started using Quiznetic, just go to quiznetic.com, and if you're a teacher, you should register. For students, they simply go here to join a game, they put in their nickname and an access code that the teacher gives them, and then they click join and they're in the game. But for now, let's look at it from the teacher perspective and how to get started using Quiznetic. So I'm going to click register to get set up to use Quiznetic. First thing I need to do is put in my birthday, click continue, and then fill in my personal information here. Now notice that there is an option to sign up using your Google account. So if you use Google a lot, especially if you have a professional Google account through your school or district, then that might be the best option. Just click sign up with Google, connect it to your Google account, and it will recognize you. So give me a minute to sign into my Google account, and then I'll continue. Okay, here I am in my Quiznetic account, and it says, looks like you haven't created any games yet. What would you like to do? make your first game or join another person's game. Well, I wanna make my first game, so I'll click there. And now it lets me in and gives me the chance to create a game board. So like I said earlier, Quiznetic is basically an educational board game. And so first thing I need to do is consider what does the game board look like? What do I want it to look like? Let's say that I teach elementary school and that I've been teaching my students about the planets and the solar system, but I also have been teaching them about language arts and English grammar, parts of speech, etc. So I think what I'd like to do is make a game that helps them practice and review the parts of speech, but it has a solar system, a planets theme. All right, so I'm going to go here on the right where it says title, and I'll call this Planetary Parts of Speech. And a description. This is a review of the different parts of speech. Next, I need to decide how is the player movement going to work. When they get an answer correct, by default, they'll move forward just one space. And that might be exactly what I want. Or maybe I could choose two spaces, or up to six. But notice that there are also other options. There's question points option, which means it depends on the question that they're being asked. If they're asked a five point question, they'll move ahead five spaces. If they're asked a two point question, they'll move ahead two spaces. The last option here really might be the most popular with your students, which is random. If you choose random, then the students will get a dice or a die that will appear when they get the question right. And they'll roll that die by clicking on it, and whatever number they get, that's how many spaces they move forward. So it makes it a little bit more game-like to do that. So I'm going to leave it set to be random. Next, what about incorrect answers? Do you want to penalize the students in the same way if they get a question wrong? Maybe move back a random number of spaces? That might be fun. Or you could say no penalty at all. There may be some advantages to not penalizing your students for guessing incorrectly. Or you can choose any of these other options. I'm going to stick with one space penalty. Next, I need to design the game board. And I can do that by adding spaces and by choosing a background. And in my opinion, it really is important to start with the background. So I'm going to click that, choose background image. And it opened up a window here that I can use to browse my computer. And I've gone to my photos folder. So here's a photo that I would like to use. And I just double click on it to open it up and pull it into Quiznetic as the background. Next, I can add some spaces. Now these spaces are locations on which the players can land, basically. And the spaces can be either squares or circles. I'll start with a square and I'll click add space. It gives me the number one, and I'll say the number one space is here on the sun. Next, I'll add another space, and this one I'll make a circle just so that you can see the difference. As soon as I chose circle, notice that it changed both of them to be circles. And I'll put the second space there, and then I can just continue to add spaces for each location on the game board where I want the players to be able to land. So um, give me a minute to finish doing this, and then I'll resume the video. 
Okay, so I've designed that the way I want it to be. It may not be perfect, but the idea is that we'll go through all the planets here and then loop back around to the sun. So that's an example of adding your own background. Now it's a background that I found on Google Images and it's from NASA and I decided to use that image. But if you don't have any images in mind or have any images of your own that you would like to use, you can just click here on clone a game and they have some default game boards that would work with just about any content area. So I could use that one, I could use that one, this treasure tropical island, a pretty good variety of generic board game designs that you could choose to use in your own games. Okay, so I love that, that they've already done a lot of the work in locating and identifying images and creating images that would be playable as a game board in Quiznetic. Okay, there's a fun one. I'm going to close that because I'd like to just stick with my solar system game board. Browsing down the page a little ways, notice that there's an option to change the size of the spaces. By default they're at 50, but I could change them to 20. It just makes for much smaller circles on the board or squares. I think I'd like to stick to, let's say, 35. So big enough to be easy to see, but not huge. Okay, next I need to decide this game that I'm making, is it available to everyone or only to me and my students? I'm okay if other people want to play this game, so I will keep it at available to everyone. Okay, this game is ready for me to begin building questions at this point. So here in the upper left, I've just been working on the game boards tab, but if I click questions, it takes me to the first question in this formative assessment game that my students will be able to play. And I'll just click to enter question number one. Okay, so there's my first question. If I want to, I can click to add an image that would go with this question. Okay, in this case, I chose an image of a snake and that doesn't necessarily make sense. So I'm going to X out of that. But I love that idea that you can have text and an image together. You can also add a YouTube video to go with the text. Next, I decide what kind of a question is this? Is it a numeric input, a number that's gonna be typed in? Is it a short answer like a word or a phrase or is it multiple choice? In this case, I'll go with multiple choice, but those other two options are really good as well. So I'll put in my first answer here, answer A. I'll put adverb, answer B, adjective, answer C, noun, answer D, verb. Okay, the correct answer is adverb. And fortunately, that was already marked as correct. But notice that you can change that. Just make sure that the correct answer is the one with the check mark. And it is okay to have more than one check mark and correct answer. If you want, you can put in an explanation of why A is the correct answer. And that explanation can have an image associated with it too, if you would like, which is pretty cool. So I'm done with question one. I would like to add another question. I just click add question and it gives me question two. And for question two, I would like the students to have to type in the answer as a short answer. So I'm gonna go here, put in the question, which is what part of speech is the word cat? So I put in my question, but this time I want the students to have to type in the answer. So I'll change it from multiple choice to short answer, and the answer is noun. Now if you choose short answer as your question type, the students have to be able to spell correctly. They're going to have to spell that out. If they misspell noun, they're not going to get it right. Again, you can put in explanations if you would like to, and then just click to add a third question. When you're done adding questions, just click save game, and I'll go ahead and do that now. Now my game is saved, and whenever I sign into my account at quiznetic.com, it should take me to the game manager and I'll see all the games I've created. I can edit them, delete them, share them with other teachers if I would like to, and I can also launch the game from here. So let's look at that now. If I click launch game, it pops up and says randomize questions for each player. Sure. Enable answer streaks where they get bonuses for getting multiple answers right in a row. Yeah, that sounds good. So I click let's go and the game begins. And here at the right you'll see that I've pulled up my cell phone to use this as an example of a student device. So let's say the students take out their cell phones or tablets, Chromebooks, whatever it might be. But anyway, you have them go to quiznetic.com. This is what it will look like on their devices. And then they just simply click or tap join a game. And then they put in this access code that's here along with a nickname for themselves. And then they just tap join. You can see now Sam is in the game, and as the teacher, I can just watch as the students get signed in to play this game. When I'm satisfied with the amount of people that are in the game, I can click Start to begin the game. 
And notice that the questions are being sent to the student devices. They're not on the board, so the students don't have to keep looking up and then looking down, although they might want to look up to see how they're competing against their teammates on the board. Okay, question one, what part of speech is the word cat? The students can tap and type in their answers. Tap submit. If the answer is correct, in this case, I chose to have a dice. So the students tap the dice. I rolled a five. So I tap next and my game piece moves ahead five spaces. Question number two, multiple choice. What part of speech is the word quickly? It's an adverb. Tap submit and again, a dice is displayed. Students tap and then move ahead in this case, four spaces. So kind of a fun game and definitely can be very educational. Of course, I really should put in more questions into my game and a few more players in the game would also make it more fun. But I hope you get the sense of how Quiznetic works. Also notice that there are some options that I could have changed before playing this game. Now that the game is over, I can click to view my results and I can also quit the game if I prefer. So this tells me the winners are in this case, big surprise, it's Sam. He's the only player in the game. I can click here to see a results table to see how every student responded for each question. So these are Sam's responses. And I could export this to my computer as a spreadsheet if I would like to. So it saves it as an Excel spreadsheet that I can open up and examine. Now with one player, it's not that enlightening, but imagine having 25 or 30 students. It would be really helpful to get that information and export it to your computer. So I'm gonna quit game, and I just wanted to show you a couple of other last options that you should be aware of about Quiznetic. The first is, if you go here to the upper right and click on your username, you can go to the history button and see a history of the games that you've played with the students and the results. So that's nice, you can get right back to those results anytime you need to by going there to your username and clicking. Also, I wanted you to see here at the left side of the screen that there is something called a question bank. You can click on that to learn how you can import other people's questions. You can basically go find questions that other people have made and if they're public games, you can take their questions and add them to a question bank that you can pull from as you build your own games. So that's a nice feature to have. At the very bottom, you see a link to those public games. And if you click it, it takes you to that collection of games. You can see that's the one I just created. You can also do searches. So let's say I want one that is for a Spanish class. I just do a search and a couple of results come up that I could take and use with my own students. So I really like Quiznetic. I think it's a fun and different take on formative assessment games and game-based learning, different from some of the other competitors out there like Kahoot and Quizzes and Socrative. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for another video from me at least every Monday.